What's up everyone? I'm the Kaiju no Kami here at KomoriCon 2019 with... Kelly Kane. And we are interviewing... Morgan Berry. For those that might not know what roles you've done, what roles have you done? <laughs> well, I voiced for Kakunsa in Dragon Ball Super. I voiced for 13 in My Hero Academia. I voiced for Madame Charlie in One Piece. Uh, Desperada in Miraculous Ladybug. Silver Sable in Marvel Avengers Academy. Uh, a few roles in Smite. Um... Yeah, it's quite a few. I know she also loves the Nambaka. Oh yeah, I voice for Mal and Nambaka, and I'm also in Borderlands Three. Uh, I voice for Neriad and uh, and various other uh, characters in that game. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a lot of varying um, characters in all of your series and video games that you've worked on. What has been your favorite so far? Ooh, okay. So I used to be in a girl band. Ooh, um, that's awesome. Yee, thank you. <laughs> I love music. I love singing. And uh, one of the shows I got to work on was Love Live Sunshine. And um, that was a fun show to work on because, you know, music and cute outfits and, you know, being in the girl band, it was really cool. And I love uh, Johanne, uh, the character uh, that I get to voice for. And she's very quirky. She's fun. She's uh, Chinebio. <laughs> and... <laughs> what I get to do with her voice is just a lot of fun. She's got so many ups and downs. You know, she has different personas, and it's just, <laughs> she's quirky. And I I feel like, I honestly, I feel like I relate to her very much so. And I love what she represents. You know, be your shining self. Be who you want to be. And that's that's just the message that she carries with her. And that's why it was so much fun for me to be a part of that show and to voice for her. She's my favorite character I've ever worked on. There. <laughs> yeah. So with a lot of um, just all of your work and all of your panels you had mentioned before, you like to bring like an educational element that we do as well. What, um, what helps inspire you in that regard to bring education or to pass on any knowledge to your attendees or fans or viewers on YouTube or anything? I host this panel called Intro to Voice Acting. Um, I really, I know there's a lot of uh, fans out there. There's a lot of people who, you know, it's a common dream mm -hmm. being a voice actor. And I really do love helping people and, and being in the industry for as long as I have and being an actor for, you know, 17 years. I, you know, I have a good amount of knowledge and I want to help others um, work their way into the industry. And so a lot of the times I will host that panel and it's very educational. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I worry that it's boring because I'm very like, <laughs> like here are the do's and don'ts of the industry. You know, uh, this is how this works and this is how you should do this. So, you know, because you don't want to sh shoot yourself in the foot before it's even in the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> With this industry and how it is. Um, and so, yeah, I do like educating um, um, aspiring voice actors. Uh, because, you know, I, I, I like helping people in any way I can. And, um, yeah, because, I mean, I was in that place at one point, too. You know? We've all been there, and, you know, we all got to start somewhere. And so, as far as, you know, educating mm -hmm. others, that's one of the things I like to do. You know, help teach and about how this industry works. And, you know, you can, you can do it, too. You know? <laughs> well, that's very important, because being that I teach elementary kids, mm -hmm. a lot of them um, that are anime fans are like, I want to be a voice actor when they grow up. And they're... Yeah. they're focus is that oh it just happens because they want to do it yeah or then you have a few they're like well I want to do it but I don't know if I'm good enough or can succeed what mm -hmm. advice would you give to both ends of the spectrum voice acting is acting so you definitely got to be an actor uh, take acting classes acting workshops get involved in theater whether it's the theater department at your school or a local theater um, any form of acting get involved and any form of the performing arts will help even being involved in choir it helps, you know, expand your breath support. Uh, it helps you ryth rhythmatically. Is that a good word for it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so just like any area of the performing arts will benefit you in the long run. So as long as you have a love for the art, that's what really matters, you know? So yeah, voice acting is acting. <laughs> Well, and I think that even goes along with music. I know music is very important to you, having been in a girl band, as yeah. well as having your YouTube channel, The Unknown Songbird. Yeah. I also listened to your original song, Fearless, which yeah. was fantastic. Thank you. And did you do the instrumentals as well? I did not. My friend Reagan Strand made that instrumental for me. And I did the lyrics and the vocals. 
all of it together was great. Especially, Thank you. I like the lyrics because they were so impactful, but the instrumentals that went along with it really helped to drive the narrative and the story along with it. Thank you. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I um. I wrote that song when I was going through a really rough time in my life, and so I poured out my heart into it. And then, mm -hmm. of course, I also sang it, and um, I'm really glad that, that the message came across. It really did, and it was um, it's fascinating when I, when I find new music because you sometimes don't go seek out new music, but when you find it, you're like, wow, this is really good. So have you ever thought about doing a full-length album? I thought about it, but it's very expensive. <laughs> Making music is not cheap, but it also it's also very time-consuming. Like, I can whip out the lyrics and the vocals, but as far as the instrumental, I, you know, I... Oh yeah, that's I can see that. Very time consuming and expensive. That's what re that's what really gets me. So I'm still working on it, and I have lyrics in the works. So we'll see. And you do a lot of covers as well. I do uh, mainly from anime <laughs> because I love anime, and I also um, I love Voltron. I'm a huge Voltron that. fan. I love Voltron, and so I wrote a parody song mm -hmm. to the tune of Despacito. It's called Voltron Heroes. So if you are a fellow Voltron <laughs> fan, and yeah, whether you've seen the old series or the new series or both, check it out. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify, um, Apple Music, uh, Amazon. It's everywhere. <laughs> on the subject of Voltron, actually, have you seen the parody for Shiro Won't Die? For your like, based on your welcome from Milano. oh yes uh, the one that Josh made right yes 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 ah uh, yes oh my god I love it yes it was great Please, yeah like, when I Shiro's saw good yours. at everything except dying ah <laughs> yes oh my gosh I he's so clever I love Josh so much so outside the craziness of anime which there's so much that you do and then music what else do you do for fun. Hmm. Well, you know, I've actually been trying to find a hobby outside of the performing arts because really I love singing and acting. And so that's really all I ever do. <laughs> it really is, though. But it's good to have a hobby outside of that, though, you know, for those days when you're just feeling drained, you know. And you're... So, I mean, I don't go hiking. I don't go, I don't go camping. I'm not an outdoorsy person. Uh, so what I do to decompress... I sit down on the couch, I get some snacks, <laughs> and I watch Netflix. That's what I do. What do you watch free. on Netflix? Ooh, I've been watching She-Ra. Is it good? I haven't had a chance to watch it myself yet. I like it, but not going to lie, I prefer Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just... Have I you just watched look. Lemony Snicket yet on Netflix? Uh, not all of it. I actually just got started. So, And so far, I'm liking it. That is probably my favorite Netflix show. Especially oh, Neil Patrick yeah. Harris. Is oh, he's Ola. so great! But even the kids do do such a phenomenal job in that. Yes. But it is funny. Yeah, it does, um, yeah. The baby that plays Sunny, they actually make a joke in season two because she's gotten bigger. They're like, "Is she a baby or now a toddler?" Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> right. Oh uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good series on Netflix right now, and Shira is really good. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I, man, I wish there was going to be more Voltron, though. I just love Voltron so much. It's my, it's still my current obsession, so I just always go back to it. I always go back to it. <laughs> For me? Like, Clance, is, that's my ship. That's my OTP. Clance. So. I never thought of that. That's a good ship. See, it's so good. It's so good. For me, I think I like a series when it actually has a conclusive ending, because mm -hmm. then you feel like... It's satisfying and it doesn't go on for 30 more, 20 more seasons. <laughs> yeah, seasons. I'll, oh, yeah. Well, you know, all good things come to an end, but some don't have good ends. <laughs> that is a very good point. And that always sucks, you know, like, oh, like so and so shouldn't have died. Why, you know? See, I'm I, dealing with those emotions right now. See, I actually <laughs> thought it was perfect for me. Yeah? I, I loved it because I didn't expect it to happen. With Voltron? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, I want. I have more. a very different opinion. <laughs> but I don't want to get into spoilers. No, it's okay. Yeah, no spoilers. But mm -hmm. well, being that you do love acting so much, if mm -hmm. and that you are in basically a newer, younger voice actor, if there was any character from before you were born or before you got into voice acting that you could voice or even play in a mm -hmm. movie, who would it be? Oh my gosh! Well, I always uh, when when people ask me what character I would love to voice. I, I usually always say um, Suna from Reborn, Hitman Reborn. Oh, yeah. And that, that show has yet to have a dub. I don't think it ever will have one, but if it does, I love voicing for boys. And I've been told I have a good 
prepubescent boy <laughs> voice. That's what I've been told. <laughs> so I'm like, cool. And that's why I get cast as boys a lot. So I would, I would love to voice for Suna if it ever gets a dub. So that'd be nice. <laughs> So I know in the back in the day they used to dub um, opening songs for anime series. Mm -hmm. There have been plenty of them. If you could do a, du a dub version of an anime opening song, what would be your favorite to do? Because there's okay. so many good ones on oh, there. Oh, there are. And I've done covers of a few. You have. My favorite one I've done is my... I covered the opening song for Tokyo Ghoul. Season one. Oh, it's yes, called you Unravel. Did. Yeah, and that one I'm I'm most proud of. Out of all the song covers I've done, I adapted the lyrics from Japanese to English, and I sang it. And I'm very proud of both the lyrics and, that I wrote and uh, and my vocals because I really did. I put a lot of emotion into it. it I was once again going through a rough time, and <laughs> that that song spoke to me. Uh, and so I'm very proud of that song cover, but also. I did a song cover of, and I know everyone's probably tired of this song, but um, Let It Go from, yes, from Frozen. That. And those lyrics at that time in my life, those lyrics spoke to what I was going through. Oh, I, that's such a powerful yes. girl anthem. Hey, you know, was, yeah, so my emotions went out to that song too, and I'm just like, you know. I like, just have to say, anyone that's upset over all the parodies just needs to let it go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let it go. It's a good song. I mean, and man, it, it really is powerful. And so, yeah, those are my two songs, favorite song covers I've ever done. And because so much of my heart went out into the, into so it. would let it go. Be, would would that be the song you'd say that actually explains your life in a nutshell? A part of my life, not all of it, but well. Or if not, what song time. would define you? Ooh. <laughs> oh gosh, there are quite a few. Um, Someone Like You by Adele definitely oh. fits a few parts of my life. That's such a good song. Yes. And um, La La Land by Demi Lovato. I love Demi. I love her. Uh, there's, you know, I'm not a supermodel. I still eat McDonald's, baby. <laughs> That's just me. I and now it. this interview gets a copyright claim. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I love the lyrics and, and golly, yeah, there are quite a few songs that speak to me in different parts of my life and, you know, because life is a journey. So, yeah. That's a good song, too. Life is a highway. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Well, I, one thing I love that you um, mentioned is that you use music, even if it's something that you've adapted or that you've written yourself, mm -hmm. as a way to manage chaos in your life. Yes. And is that um, something that has helped you, or yes. is it just like a fuel to get it over it? It's very therapeutic. Oh my goodness, yes. And you know, it's funny, when I wrote Fearless, mm -hmm. uh, I remember in the moment I, I wrote out all of my feelings. Sometimes I'm having a bad day, I write out some lyrics that, you know, maybe it happens to rhyme, but it like fits what I'm feeling. And then later on I'll add it to a song. Um, as far as Fearless, I, oh, man, I was going through quite a journey and, um, but now that I look back on it, I, I feel like I poured out all of my all of my emotions, all of those memories into that song, mm -hmm. and now it, it was easier to let it go. A, hey, but <laughs> it really was. And now I, when I look back on when I was writing that, I don't remember what I was so upset about. I don't. Oh. Rem I, I really don't remember. And maybe it's because I really do have a bad memory. I do. But in that time, I, I it's almost as if I wrote all those feelings and stored them away in that song. So now I really don't remember exactly what prompted me to write that song. I just remember I was going through a really rough time and maybe maybe that song will speak to someone else. And no, yeah. I think that's a great way of looking at it too is that you can use it as yeah. a fuel to let go yeah. of all the bad it's, or negativity. Yeah, it stores all of my feelings, all those emotions from that time and those memories and then I put it out to the world and then I don't know, it's a breath of fresh air. It's almost like it's it's 
lifting off my shoulders. Oh, absolutely. That burden. I'm giving it away and hoping that maybe my song will help someone else to heal. No, and it was very powerful, so I, I recommend it, and I know you have it on iTunes. Yes. Oh, it, yeah, Apple Music. Yes. Um, it's on Spotify, uh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, it's really on a, a lot of platforms, mm -hmm. and so I'm sure if you just Google it, it should come up. Just type in Morgan Berry Fearless. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Any other social media links people can find you with? Yes, I am on Twitter and Instagram, and I have a Facebook fan page. All at the Morgan Berry. Well, yep. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. And until next time, bye. Mm -hmm.